You know what I don't want you to sit through? A sponsorship. I want to do a pledge drive for my Patreon linked below to hopefully by year end surpass 750 patrons. Then I won't be 70% fan funded like I am now. I'd be 100% fan funded. It's really needed as ad revenue continues to decline massively. It would also protect me from being demonetized, deplatformed, etc. Please consider pledging if you love this series and the channel. Thank you so much. It's another new video and the fact that Zoro is still not only dragging along Chopper, but also doing so happily just says so much about him and it's all good. By the by, I recently mentioned me bugging my wife to get a Chopper figurine and she did so. So here's the picture I promised. Uh, Feels like a great time to also mention the fact that not only did the girls often change clothes, not only did they all have winter clothing, but now they've all got desert clothing too! <laughs> How come Chopper literally continues to be the very best though? <laughs> Winning this because it's legit Luffy trying to beat up a giant wave? I know I said it before because I truly am such a big fan, but he really is the best though, no? Nanny? Very much a win for that excellent sounding nanny. I take joy in the small things in life and that did it for me. I mean, my god, just how badass is Zoro? Not only was he dragging Chopper all that time, but now he's effortlessly and without complaint dragging Luffy. Not running up a sandy hill on the spot. I mean, it really doesn't matter how you slice it, dice it, divide it up among your close friends, that's a stupidly cool boat. And that, my good friends, is an actually great plot twist that I didn't see coming. Not running down the sandy hill on the spot! That caught me so off guard. I legit, same as them, thought he was rushing to save the girls and the camel, and he's after water. Those damn damage effect animators are totally at it again! Not gonna tell Fibs, the creatures in this series and this arc right now are great, bloody huge all the time! I love this anime so much. Since this series includes so much of me, let me just say he may be named after a holy Roman emperor who drowned heading to one of the later crusades. God, I love history so much too. But the actual win is because he's Benolanov from Hunter x Hunter, one of the phantom troop who spins and has holes in his body that make sound. He uses his nen that way. Awesome character. <laughs> This is the takeaway from Luffy's perspective. It's three times I said it in the past four comments, but I love him too. Putting a huge amount of detail into these two shots of the wrecked ship. Oh, little Chopper's reaction to them all acting like this around him. Too adorable. He really is also a badass to be fair, isn't he? Cool, but at the same time, kawaii entrance! Baze from Hunter x Hunter, from the mob type arc with the auction, she was the one who kisses dudes and they fall for her, met a sad end, but I always liked her and the performance. How quickly they ended up leaving the scene, but his lingering scream was the best for comedy! Trust Luffy though to bring it right back right away. <laughs> Trust Oda to not just have them make their way into town, but make it a high octane and increased character building mystery as we're left wondering, what's her issue with Vivi? <laughs> Moments like this just prove how awesome she is as well, piloting, 
Do you pilot Sambo? So damn well in the face of such danger, and not going all damsel in distress, just taking action. Love how unpredictable One Piece can be. They were being held captive by him, and now Vivi is trying to get them word to fix the ship, and Nami is chatting away with him, almost friends even. I love it. I like that a lot. That's a good statement to nicely sum up his position on what's happening in the country regarding the civil war and, of course, everything to do with the powder. But it's said so nicely. A small whimper how Sanji and Zoro aren't milling around up top doing nothing, but instead are down below clearly trying to help in advance by finding pieces of useful wood. <laughs> One Piece uses its music to such a high degree, fitting its songs, and hear me now, perfectly with the scenes. This is just another example of hundreds by this point for me. Jesus, this dude is just spitting almost poetry out of his mouth. Oftentimes now. <laughs> that sounded really weird. Oftentimes now. Just like win number 2709, he says this, which really captivated me personally because it's so apt to the country's state. Suddenly throwing some giant sand dung beetle lore at us and not treating it like some joke to help resolve the scene. This dude in this moment being absolutely sick by jumping down to do this too. Got my blood pumping for real. So they're getting max wins here, but I won't show what got them the first, as it's a bit long copyright wise, but it's the guy's long scream whilst tackling the ball. Then of course Zoro doing this dizzle. Sanji helping, but most of the win is the nicely added touch of him scraping the dung off a little. I mean, that was nothing short of incredible right there. The lore and world building is always next level in these recent arcs, ever since Town, I think, in terms of showing lots of locations within their location, if you know what I mean, like Drum Island. Now showing how it relates to her, and a good job is done uh, for showing the people lined up without clear faces, but still an overwhelming feeling of sadness coming off of them. And now we get the full story of how she became full of hate herself. She waited behind, relying on the king's words that meant so much to her as a child, and sadly he never came. <laughs> that symbolism right there is gorgeous in this moment. <laughs> Ah, oh, she nearly got me going there, to be honest. That raw sadness washing over her. She really does love her people. My god, Oda made this giant dude near unable to speak without spitting pure poetry, bruh. anime for choosing music like this for their grand return at the end of the episode. Uh! <laughs> yeah, take one more for the end of the episode as we catch up finally with Ace having gotten a ride, but also how they end the episode with that little delay was magic. <laughs> Not only does he spit poetry so often, but he's also a man of honour for respecting the people who live in this area so much that he won't even go into their town with the ship and crew. <laughs> Never ceases to amaze me how well Luffy gets on with people he comes across like this. Also though, Oda filling in One Piece with so many memorable people like this, who meant something to the story, not just feeling like some random encounter meant to pad the runtime, you know? 
ところでお前の兄貴はどこ行ったんだあなエースのことなら心配ねえよ。I just had to show and give a win there for her too. She had previously looked coldly at her, but obviously upon their parting, chose to forgive her and move on from her difficult past. Vivi waved back too. Heck of a lot of animation for such a short scene! This is the kind of comedy that, whilst easy to do, I find One Piece excels at every single time and it does make me laugh. In fact, I agree with someone on part 12, the comedy is getting better and better this saga. Also, I must admit, One Piece is utterly unpredictable most of the time. Like, who the thought that suddenly Ace would turn up first like this? I love how wild the story can be. I find things like this clever as well. He saw how Ace smashed his guys, and so rather than fly into combat, he does this instead. A more realistic reaction to seeing pure strength, I'd say. And then just like that, so quickly, as in win number 2733, Ace is now back with Luffy and the crew. Let's go! I love Luffy, but you know, they aren't exactly wrong here. Obligatory Chopper is friggin' adorable related win of extreme cuteness! Once more in the same vein as wins number 2733 and 2735, there's no, they're bad guys, we're good, let's get them! Because you've got Ace here giving some grey to the black and white. So, yeah, Rodo, I'm going to be a bad guy. I'm going to be a bad guy. I'm going to be a bad guy. Two wins here. Firstly, I love how this scene is being used to forward Vivi's character arc, with her reminiscing about what she heard from the girl, now woman in the desert. But also, I equally love Ace and his own character here. He's not saying yes or no, he's merely pointing out the situation and the obvious, but to me, he was super unique here in how he spoke with them. This is also so damn unique, bruh. I swear nearly everyone else would write this as bad guys there, we go beat them up. But there is genuine nuance involved here. <laughs> Two wins again. Firstly, I'm overcome with a feeling of love and affection for this anime now. In fact, I'm bumping it up from 9 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 on my anime list. Link below if you'd like to track my progress. But also, Chopper being so adorable in that reaction, it almost pains me. Putting a decent amount of animation into this moment, especially the pot rolling around as he got out. This old man constantly giving them grief by setting up their fight, meeting them outside the town, following them to the gate, and now climbing up there to proclaim this. It's fairly quick across the screen, but you can still see in these two shots how many of them are very different looking. Telling a lie just like Usopp did when Luffy and the crew first arrived? I think that was 10 or 50 million pirates. Ha! <laughs> They basically addressed it too! Follow up win! <laughs> Then you only went and scored another follow up win! I can't not give them one for Luffy falling for it again! Oh my god, bless Chopper! This so rarely happens, but again, one for him also believing it. He's so wonderful and naive! Damn man, even a character like this, we get some serious look into his background. Nothing surface level, it's just made to feel deeper by the beautiful and meaningful music too. He deserves a win for this. Alongside that music, it makes for a fantastic scene that makes you proud of the guy for stepping up in spite of his fears and doing this to fulfill his dream. 
あの子供たちの夢は奪えねえ。You know what? I'm keeping the last one, but it's made even better by the fact that he's doing this for those kids and their own dreams, like he had as a youngster. He's not even doing it for himself, really. When you understand that Luffy allowed himself to get punched here, it tells us so much about him and how he views the world, wanting to buy into his dream here for a moment. Might sound strange, but those guys hyping themselves up now and recklessly attacking all due to their leader's words and actions has legit me pumped up too! I find it so awesome that they planned all of this out and now having their fears brushed aside are happy to pull out. Even though Luffy nearly gave the whole game away, at least Sanji and Usopp stayed in character the whole time. <laughs> I swear I'm such a sucker for a happy ending, like for this village, these people, and the crew, of course. <laughs> Trust Oda to also use that moment to now further her development and harken back to a memory from her own childhood. It's funny, out of the entire crew, the only one who looks to be close to fine is Zoro, such a badass! Man oh man, when did Zoro get so lovely towards Chopper? It just hit me that during this flashback from 11 years ago, the animators poured a lot of detail into the clothing, the building, and the internal set design. A lot of hard work there. Even though the scene goes roughly for the king, I figured I'd drop a win for showing us the kind of man he was and still is, eager to help those under his rule facing difficult times like this boy. <laughs> Two wins here. First of all, I liked that little camera type effect of following the chop to the noggin. But secondly, this is what I was talking about two wins back. It goes so far as to have less for himself and his family so that others in his kingdom may get what they need. What a guy! I'm really appreciating this backstory, just to see Vivi like this as a youngster and what she was like. She's kind of feisty in much the same way as she is today, but more refined, of course. Not running on the panicked father spot! I love also how the king has this air of reason and logic to him, rather than extreme highness above all normal people. He instead looked at things, as I said, very logically. They really don't have to, so look and appreciate how much they pack this short scene full of life and people. This is also what I meant before about lore and world building, just far more scenes from various different places that only serve to further build the world around our characters. It's insane dude, even when it comes to children there's no expense spared and they all look completely different. The fact that Vivi ended up winning their second little battle, that this lad took it in his stride and handed over leadership, and how it speaks to both of their characters and builds their prior story. Back to back wins again! Firstly, very simply, it's their rather hilarious disguises here. Secondly, it's how loving of a father he is, that he wanted his daughter to have friends, but also how it works, that he wanted her to learn how to lead others. So he was double proud of her here. <laughs> Whoa, back to back to back to back wins, not running on the spot naturally. But also how lovely she's treated by the people during this time, how much they care for her, even if it's only the lad's parents that we're seeing at this point. I'd feel the height of silly if I just went and ignored this happening. Bless him as well, he really loved her so much. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and that as well. <laughs> Lovely looking scenery shot of the town. It makes for a really interesting contrast that these kids, to some degree I'm guessing, later become the rebels, yet here they defend the princess with everything they had. It's almost painful to watch Luffy do things like this sometimes. You can tell though how little danger they're in though that it's treated as such a background event to the telling of her story. I was so impressed I decided to show it and then talk over it but showing all of them like this in a big and wide panning shot when they didn't have to and from two angles no less plus some animation too. Man, what an incredibly brave young lad he was! It made me so damn happy when these two finally managed to catch up to them! Between that sweet voice acting right there, fearing she'd lose her friends in the fight due to his orders, and his reaction here, that nearly got me! Seeing the boy getting his dues for going so far to help his daughter, and also how he took the praise too. Small win, but hearing him do this for the first time in forever, since he's naturally not been in the anime for a while now, put a big old smile onto my face. Oh, and who could forget our number one favourite duck character, who was so much smaller and a baby back then? Between the map, the verbal description and the overlay, that's a really clever way of showing us what he's talking about. Rather than merely saying, we're starting a new city in the desert and then people are on camels heading out there or whatever, we're shown this scene of extensive planning and equipping for doing the task. <laughs> Another example of keeping that scar on his face, which no doubt will still be on there as an adult too. Oh snap! That's great storytelling! Not only is the city where the rebels are based called Yuba, the one they went off to build, but Koza is their leader. So sick! Luffy once again thinking this stuff is always shrimp. I think it's really clever here how we see some people are able to take to living in the desert fairly easily with this abode. It really is times like these that you understand just how different Ace is to his brother as Luffy again steals food. <laughs> For some unknown reason, comedy like this really tickles me that he thinks it's still about to go off. <laughs> Been a ickle while since we last saw Nami lay down the law to get the group back on task again. Take that win! <laughs> Never change, Luffy. <laughs> Never change. Not running off to meet on the spot! Well, these kids are absolutely adorable, especially being kind like this to one another. Max wins here, firstly because the little brother, to my mind, didn't want his older brother to have to live with doing that, but of course the Max wins is then granted by Ace being a legend there. <laughs> Brilliant how all of the stories are fit together like this, really. One of the many things I love about Luffy is how laid back he is. He yells to run away, the bomb will destroy everything, and then silence, but Luffy's just up there with him and like, what? <laughs> Ooh, ooh. 
You know, for the guy who voiced Arlong, he does a great job of changing his voice quite a lot for this guy. I'm a big fan of gizmos like this. Reminds me of Krieg. Ah, good times. But also, half the win is for Luffy's reaction to the fight here. to the manga, so I find myself really appreciating that the extra mile is gone for, like, with these effects here. This dude is unlocking all the Gizmo-related wins we haven't been getting since Krieg left the story. Again, it's not canon, but that's a nice twist. Whoever came up with that is clever, because it sends you down the wrong road of assuming things about him when it turns out he's their father. It was also very pleasant to see more of this guy and their background and it was made even better to my mind because he was a good father to them and gave up everything for them. I'm a soppy git! Speaking of sweet, it's also very sweet that he did this purely for his kids, and of course, they really didn't want him to get hurt, hence approaching Ace like they did. Yeah, one more for that. A lot of the recent episodes have been in the same vein, but I really appreciate it all the same, even if this one did borrow off of those from the manga a little bit. Mine sound weird, but even if it is a silly mission, which it is, I can still appreciate the pride and sense of honor involved in pushing oneself like this. A bit how I live my own life with morals. Shout out to Popo as well. I was gonna win him before for all of his help, but it never quite crossed the threshold till now. Kids, warms my heart to see how much they care for their father right here. <laughs> Goodness me, that explosion legit was huge. I figured that was set for dramatic effect. <laughs> Double wins. Firstly, Ace actually saving them here. Credit to Luffy trying to do so just beforehand as well. And secondly, it's another excellent display of the pure and raw power that Ace possesses. It shocked me a little to see him being able to blast away something as huge as that so easily. <laughs> Luffy said that so casually, likely knowing he was still alive though to be fair, but most of the win is that he looked after his lads and is still okay. Let's go! Drop in one more quick win here for this, even though it's not canon, I appreciate it more than I normally would because it seriously helps their journey feel massive along with the country. Oh no! That's... Oh man, I don't like that, he's suddenly going. Gonna genuinely, seriously miss Ace. Take my win. That's super fast and carefree response from him and of course the mystery behind the paper, but not to forget the promise that they'll meet again, which did make me a happy popster! A nice little warm and fond farewell to these three as well to end the episode. What's not the smoothest I've ever seen, I can seriously appreciate a panning and rotating shot like this in a weekly anime. Oh snap, they did it twice! <laughs> yes, it's filler, but it's the kind of filler that's best placed in moments like this during the story where they're in this giant desert heading across a country. 
借金のこと言わせたいの借金は地獄に落ちなかったら俺が叩き落とす楽しみにしてるわ I'm glad we got a moment like this again. Hasn't happened since just a few episodes into the start of the saga. Their interactions like this never fail to make me laugh. I didn't think we'd ever get another small Luffy vs. Zoro, even if it is over real quick. I liked this moment because clearly Zoro was going to use his blade in some regard and then changed his mind. Glad that was shown. Credit to the animators for still using nice fresh movements rather than repeated ones. Chopper is literally the greatest! This was a clever little addition, given that it's all that Chopper has actually experienced since joining the crew. Man, I like that too! He's also so humble, could have easily said, Oh yeah, I've been here the longest by far. But ultimately, he doesn't really care about that, and then goes as far as to say there's no difference. Zoro pretty much stating what I think about their crew. They're not a normal one by any means, but there's a real glue that keeps them all together. Yes, it's their goals, but I think it's also Luffy. Even though it's more funny than anything else, I did think to myself that it's cool that he can move them such a great distance in such a short period of time like this, when there's a rock that is. Nanda Korea. Obviously, as I said, it's not canon this episode, but this is a pretty cool turn of events and has got me wondering what that is down there. Well played, anime. <laughs> Being nice to animals is always a win. I mentioned a short while ago that I'm a big fan of history, so seeing these old Roman slash Greek style buildings here and hearing her say this was pretty awesome to me from a law perspective. <laughs> She actually raises an excellent point here, I think, that has likely weighed on her mind for some time in regards to the rebels and what they're trying to do. Would it make any big difference to the people? I'm glad that she wrapped up her long statement with this, though. You can think what you like about the rebels, but what Crocodile is doing and his people will lead to nothing good for the general population. That resolution on her face as she says this. Quite badass for Vivi, I must say. You can see how determined she is. That. <laughs> Poor old Usopp. Luffy totally acting like a kid is a big favorite of mine. Oh my god, that's one of the best jokes ever. To refer to it as his comedy hole. After what he said when he first fell down it. Probably didn't outright mean to, but they made a good point here. It would be difficult to throw your arm up and out perfectly the first time, hence how he missed, and then second time drag down some rubble. Some sick looking animation on the destruction of the boulder up above, though. <laughs> Excellent! Not much else to say, really. Great music, a great inventive way to not only get out of there, but move quite some distance, too. Hopefully, in the right direction, though. Giving this a win because it made me think when I saw it, this moment basically encapsulated what Luffy is as a character in a way. 
Even though it's not canon, I can still appreciate Vivi showing so much concern for Luffy, Zoro, and Chopper having not caught up to them yet. Shout out to one of the best moments of the entire anime that Nami is reminded of her in regards to why they have so much faith in one another. I know I wind it a while back, but Chopper is great for things like this. I think it's just so good how Oda gave them all little abilities outside of the normal stuff too, like things they're good at. Ending a non-canon episode with quite a bit of animation that they didn't need to do. That nice little wink there from Nami, like saying, I told you, keeping faith in them catching up was the right thing to do. And then a final one for a nice little art style to end the episode. Nami being straight up insanely smart right here. Like, she's the greatest for thinking outside the box like that, I swear. I liked that. Just shows how much stock Luffy puts in his brother's words. The mere fact that that entire plan of his failed terribly. Yet, like I said at the time, plans never really fail in anime. The guy does something, it happens. But not this time, just didn't go down. As their people start to come together for a meeting of the officer's rank, it feels like the story is right back on track in a huge way and has to be so damn hyped. <laughs> this dude is weird, but I'm happy to see him again due to his last interaction with the crew being nothing if not seriously unique. He's the only one so far not being evil for the sake of being evil. <laughs> Ah, now that's a good twist! I hadn't expected to ever run into him again, but in a way I'm glad, if only because his fruit power was insane to me as you can recall from that part. <laughs> Firstly, that's my boy Endeavor from My Hero, who seemingly voices like 10% of the anime's male characters at this point, but all jokes aside, I think he's an amazing voice actor, so we always get to win. Secondly, half this win is for the damage effects and the other half is for the mystery of him attacking some of his own men as it were, albeit he didn't seem to know them. Let's as always be real about this, normally, new tough looking guy walks into the anime, gets attacked, he's gonna beat him down, but not in one piece. They should have a fair fight for a while here. Jesus! Even more so than that, he actually lands a heavy hit on the guy and knocks him outside. In fact, it's Max wins due to that gorgeous animation and him bursting through. Well, that was unexpected, and yeah, <laughs> take a win for that. Even this one shot alone is enough to quickly score a win for showing us a seriously different location to anything up till now. How can I not give that a win for being one of the most unique ways to travel on land ever? Just like when the officers were meeting up, feels like even bigger plans are now being put into action as we approach the maybe 75% mark of the whole saga. I'm so hyped you have no clue. Feels big! Zoro is now carrying Usopp too. Three of them he's carried at one point or another. I think I'm now starting to understand, could be Crocodile's abilities causing this, constantly making trouble for the kingdom, the king, the people, the rebels, stirring things up. That's a great twist if so. If that's who I think it is, the lad's father, and he's still, in spite of all of this, trying to dig to get to the water and repair the city, do right by his king and his word, I might tear up, bruh. 
ゆっくり休んでいくといい。Ah,、uh, it is him! And they aged him properly as well, bless their hearts! God, I love this anime and story so much! やとなら、いくらでもある。それが、この町の自慢だから。な。It legit breaks my heart a little to see him struggling to dig whilst talking about the great things to be found in this city like this. Ah,、uh, well done! It's that not ever giving up factor. This way of telling us without outright saying it that his loyalty is still very much with the king, whilst his son is now leading the rebels. Nice contrast there between them, I must say. I know we knew we were there pretty much, but it's painful to think that Chopper was literally in their base and now has wandered this far away in the end. Bibi, I'm a Bibi. Oh, what's up? Bibi, I'm a Bibi. You're a Bibi. You're a Bibi. Luffy trying so hard to prove it's not Vivi and outright saying the word princess whilst doing so. You got that. I'm a Bibi. I'm a Bibi. Oh, this reunion is so sweet and it's only made better with that music too. I'm a Bibi. 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 Again! This frail old man now seen up close. That man! Even all these 11 years later, he still has faith in his king. That just warms my heart that he holds firm in spite of absolutely everything that has happened, and it's because he knows and trusts the man. <laughs> Poor man, probably just letting out all of those emotions he's kept inside for so long now after seeing her face again. Here they are again, showing and not telling, as we see how worn down the shovel is, having been used hundreds upon hundreds of times to try and keep the city going in one way or another. Learning this great piece of lore, it feels now as though everything is coalescing in the story to come to a pivotal junction, and thankfully, our heroes are here for it. And of course, he's in tears as he says this naturally, as his son is the very one leading them. I appreciate getting to see so much destruction and now finally back to some more pockets of life every now and then. At least the arc wasn't all ruins and life was peppered throughout it too, actually. <laughs> in this moment, he probably was happy to see that she hadn't changed in those 11 years and was still the same kind and thoughtful girl he knew back then. Fantastic. For her to say these words, and then we get a look of utter determination from the entire crew, all semblance of being tired and thirsty and hungry gone in that moment. Darth Weirdo, Mal Liao, Nick Windham, The Elementator Wars, Christopher Willis, Emmanuel Gonzalez, Fancy Turtle, Kepan, Mini Masher, Marquez, Nazomi, Or Keeper, Otter A. Bodonisi, Steelers, The Epic Commander, Bird Without a Word, Brandon Creer, Brian Bayot, Cameron, Christian Tuasa, Commander Chris, Doggos for Life, Dragonstorm 35, Aaron Winters, Guru Guru, I Am Here, James Tafoya, Your Edvinson, Kevin Alston, Comfoik, Kylie Wobb, Lisa Marie Timp, Luis Minito, Magnus, Mr. Mansu, Lightly Winter, Peter Milligan, Ruby Rose, Satakayari, Zion 44, Sean, The 100s, Tiger Lily Warrior, Sumi Bito, A Joker, Alexander Schwartz, Ali 50, Amadillo, Brainless Ben, Cecilia, Cedric, Cloud Garden, Dante Soul, Dark Lord Bloody Soul, Death the Kid 123, Devon, Dragon Defender, Esso, Garrett Vermish, Gibbs, Hope to Lose Ritter, Israel Caldera, Jason Davies, John John, Jaffa 6263, Kelnock, Kevin Nelta, Kevin 102, Knuckle Duster, Kai 158, Kyle Jones, Laxor, Laxus, Liam Gagati, Lifty, Lionel Schultz, Marvin, Matthew Blancet, Michael Lewis, Modiverum, Monty, Mudini, Mr. Firecall, Natsu Dragneel, Nick Monaco, Nick Pell, 9028, Ollie the Mighty, Oliver Smiley Reacts, Oscar I. Lopez, Owen Haloran, Q Flash, Ryan DeVries, Sarcastic Truth, Snow, Stan, Storm 970, TRS, The Danish Muggle, Thrasher 340, Vernon Hogan, Will Sass, Willie Man,